Hey, Azamor Moore here with Aramac Real Estate Team. And in this video, we're going to talk about renovation mistakes to avoid. But before we get started, please hit that like button. Please hit subscribe. And let's get into what home renovations are for those that aren't aware. It's basically a repair or an upgrade to your home. It can be something as easy as painting, changing out a light fixture, upgrading cabinets, a full-on kitchen remodel, bathroom remodel. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. So it's basically just a repair or upgrade, no matter how big or small. But the benefits that you can get from even the smallest repair when you're looking to sell your home is what we're really looking to talk about in this video. So what we're going to do is talk about some different home renovation projects. And I actually have a helpful bit of information. I have what I call the seller's playbook. It's in the description. There's a link you can download it. And it kind of gives you a checklist. Simply put, is it worth doing the renovation or not when you're looking to sell your home? So it's really helpful. It's in the description. There's a link there. So go ahead, download it while we continue to talk about home renovations in this video. So when you know you're looking to sell, you want to be really strategic with your home renovations. I would highly recommend being careful on what you decide to do from there. So of course, there's risk associated with doing these renovations, whether you do it yourself or you hire somebody, you know, simple things like you want to have a clear plan. Again, you want to be cost effective and have a budget in mind. That's another thing you want to make sure that you have a budget and you stick to it. And you want to factor in things like delays, and overage. So let's talk about the most common mistakes to avoid. The biggest mistake I see people doing is over improving for the neighborhood. And by that, I would mean, for example, you're putting in pure wood imported from Italy in a starter home. But just understand there's kind of a cap per neighborhood and it becomes unrealistic once the value goes over that. And so you have to understand what your neighborhood's doing when you do these renovations. Again, if you want to put the most expensive floors in your home, the most expensive light fixtures, you know, a hundred thousand dollars chandelier, that's personal preference. But you have to understand when it's time to sell, you're not going to get the value out of those things. The other biggest renovation mistake that I notice with home buyers is actually neglect. So it's almost the opposite. They're not fixing things that they know are broken. They're going for the cosmetic aesthetics. They want the house to look pretty, so they put in new countertops instead of fixing the leak under the slab. So when it's time for inspection, the inspector is looking for the home to be structurally sound. So you're still going to end up on the hook trying to rewire the house before closing, or the buyer's most likely going to walk. So you don't want to neglect these things. The fundamental repairs are what you want to start with. They may not be the prettiest, but it's going to keep the house safe and it's going to make the inspection work a lot smoother because guess what? Even if you can't see it, if it's a major structural issue, it's going to devalue the home and make it more difficult to sell. And the last mistake I see, and it's not really a mistake. Again, it comes down to personal preference, but it's just that choosing highly personalized designs. If you have rooster wallpaper because you just love roosters, all throughout your house, that's a personal decision. We're taught to try and keep the house neutral when we're looking to sell. So again, if you put it all over the house right before you decide to list it, the next person may not appreciate it. So again, if you're thinking about selling or you're considering selling, think about more neutral options for the renovations by doing extreme things that you really, really like, but are kind of out of the norm. Now, picking one off light to kind of help accent or define an area is totally different than going over the top and personalizing it to what you like, thinking that the buyer should like it too and willing to pay more money for your upgrades. All right, so now let's talk about budgeting and planning. We kind of went over that at the beginning of the introduction. Let's dive a little bit further into that. Before you start, again, before you even swing a hammer, before you bring any workers in the house or go to the hardware shop and buy your material, you want to set a budget and a realistic budget. And like I talked about, that's going to include some kind of fluff. So you kind of got to be aware and have an understanding of what repairs you're doing. Or even when you hire a professional, get a bid, get a budget. I recommend you get two or three bids. That way you can kind of compare. And then once you decide on who you're going with, make sure you stick to that budget. 10% is a good overage budget. A lot of contractors will factor in something. Ask them if they did. If they didn't, uh, then make sure you factor that in on your own. So that way you're not surprised when your 
$5,000 renovation becomes $5,500 or $6,000. And then once you have your budget set, prioritize it. Again, start with the fundamentals. Start with the basics that need to be done. If electrical wiring is something that needs to be fixed, fix it. If there's a plumbing leak, fix it. Kitchen remodel, I wouldn't recommend redoing anyway. If you were doing it, planning on selling your home, but let's say it's a $10,000, $20,000 kitchen remodel. That $20,000 turns into 40 when it's all said and done, and now you don't have money to fix the roof, to fix that plumbing issue. Whereas how do you start it with the fundamentals and then work your way up to the fancier cosmetic stuff, you would make sure you at least get the absolute required things fixed first. So again, that's the goal. Renovations are great. Everybody loves HGTV where you get to see the flippers do all the amazing things and it looks like a dream home. But if you turn on the water and it doesn't work, who cares how fancy the faucet is? If you hit the light switch and the light doesn't come on, who cares how fancy the fixture is, right? So take care of those things first. During the planning phase, you also want to set a timeline, figure out, okay, is this going to take a week? Is it going to take six weeks? Is it going to take three months? And then you know when you're going to be done and be ready to list your house. If you're thinking about listing your house in the summer, you don't want to start a week before you plan on listing and then end up not listing till Christmas, right? And again, there'll be delays. Again, there may be surprises when you start doing something. It's a little bit more in detail than you thought or the contractor thought, and it may add a few days or a week to the timeline, but you want to prepare for that. All right, so now let's talk about hiring contractors vice doing it yourself or DIY. I know there's a lot of DIYers out there. I love to do a little bit of myself around the house, but if you're not familiar with that, you're probably going to lean towards a professional. But let's talk about the pros and cons of each. Again, if it's something simple, you can probably DIY it or hire a neighborhood handyman to knock it out. As the difficulty level raises on that renovation, I would highly recommend seeking a professional contractor, general contractor, or you know, an electrician, plumber, a tradesman based off the work. When it comes down to it, a lot of times, if you do it yourself, you don't think to pull permits. Here in Kaufman County and Rockwall County, I mean, you're pretty much pulling a permit for everything. So you want to be very careful about that because that's going to pop up on the inspection when they see, say, a garage conversion that you did yourself and there's no permit. It's going to make a buyer nervous because they don't know what's behind that wall. Or if you hire a professional, they should know and should be pulling permits. Yes, it's going to be a little bit more expensive when you pull permits, but yes, that means the city is going to come inspect it to make sure it's done correctly. And you're not just hoping that you've got a good, honest contractor that's trying to do it correctly and not cut corners. Because I will tell you, they'll cut corners, maybe not on purpose, maybe not intentionally to set you up for failure, but if they can do something faster, quicker, they're more than likely going to do it. I've only met a few contractors that are going to say, hey, I was working and the pipe should go this way. They're usually going to say, oh, I can just cut this corner and do it this way. And it's fine. They're not going to explain to you that that's probably not correct. It probably wouldn't pass inspection. They're just going to do it and hope you don't notice, hope that an inspector doesn't drive by and shut down the project and you know they get paid, move on, and you don't know until it's too late when you're trying to sell the home and the buyer's inspector is hammering you for a repair that you thought was done correctly. So the risk in DIY is lack of experience and oftentimes you don't pull permits, maybe because you don't know, maybe you don't think you need to, but you're just not educated. And again, you're probably not experienced in doing the renovation yourself. So you have to factor that in. Yes, it's probably going to save you a couple bucks if you do it correctly, but it's definitely not going to save you time because you're going to be the one swinging that hammer with the saw, cutting the tile, whatever it may be. And if you're okay with that and you have the time, great. But again, you want a quality product. Just because you're selling the house doesn't mean you can slap some tile on the floor, crook it and say, hey, brand new tile. And the buyer's going to accept that. If they look at the tile and it's all crooked, they don't care if you just laid it last week. It's not laid right. They're going to want to either rip it out and redo it or they're just not going to put an offer on your home. And yes, I know we're all the best at doing everything. But honestly, the workmanship is often a little bit less for most DIYers. I know there's some perfectionists out there that can argue that with me, and I get it. You may be the better option, but on average, the average homeowner, it's probably better to stick with a contractor as the difficulty level increases in these renovations. 
Cost-wise, yes, it's going to cost you more. You have to pay them for their time, pay them for labor. But that means that's time you're not trying to do that, especially if you have a job, a nine to five that you also have to do. When are you going to do it over the weekends? You know, and then a week project turns into three months because you're doing it when you have time. So aside from time constraints, you've got to be very careful about those code violations if you DIY these renovations. When you hire a contractor, make sure that they pull the proper permits. Again, you'll be inspected by the city or the county, depending on where you're at, and they'll ensure that it's done properly and you're not having to go back and fix it, redo it later. And I'm sure some of you guys are shaking your head when I'm saying hire a contractor. And I also understand not all contractors are equal. There's some pretty terrible contractors out there. So you got to work on a process of vetting contractors, workers, and trying to hire the right one. You know, get referrals from friends. I'm not just saying Facebook and social media, like, hey, I'm looking for a contractor in the neighborhood. Has anybody done anything? And they say, yeah, this guy's great. Well, who was that guy? Is it their brother? Is it their husband? Are they just giving a shout out to a friend because they know who they are? Or did they actually do quality work? If it's a friend or family member, you could go over to the house and look at the work. And then you know. You can talk to them over the phone. You can get an idea. You can get the estimates and see if the price is right, if the quality of work is satisfactory for you. And you interview them. You ask them, do they normally pull permits? Are they willing to pull permits? You don't just hope that they know what they're doing. You sound like you know what you're talking about. You do the education and research. So that way, you're more likely to get a quality product out of the workers, out of the contractors. For those that have never pulled permits, just so you know, just pulling the permit isn't the end all be all. Once the work is done, there's a final inspection. So the contractor can do all the work, say it's done, patch it all up, walk away, you can pay them. But if you never get that final inspection, then it's not blessed by you know the city or the county, the authority that's overlooking the permits and the codes. So you want to make sure the final permit is done to ensure that the work was done correctly before you pay out your contractor. And by pulling permits and getting inspections done, not only does it help ensure the quality of work is there, but it helps avoid legal issues later on. And before we get done with this video, let's talk about some quick things uh, that would be cost effective and add value to the home. Things like painting. If your house is 300 different colors, paint it a neutral color. That's something most people can do themselves. Another thing is changing out light fixtures. Again, I mentioned that myself. That's something I do in my own home. It updates the house. It makes the house look newer even if it's 10 years old, 20 years old, 50 years old, what else do we have? We have um, handles, handles on your kitchen cabinets or even doorknobs, changing them to levers. That's something super simple. That's a couple hours worth of work tops, including doing all the kitchen pulls or handles that you got. Now, what would I recommend you not to do? We talked about kitchen renovations. To me, that's something you do knowing you're going to stay at the house. Don't do a kitchen renovation and then try and sell the house. You're going to spend again twenty, thirty thousand dollars most likely, depending on the size of your kitchen. It doesn't mean you're going to get an extra twenty, thirty thousand dollars out. You might get zero dollars extra out. So that's thirty thousand dollars out of pocket that you could have kept in pocket. And you may say, well, if I don't upgrade it, I'm not going to sell it for as much. You don't know that. If you're trying to sell it for the top of the market, then no, you're probably not going to get that. But maybe you'll get five grand less or ten grand less. That's better than spending thirty grand to get. 10 grand more or five grand more or nothing. So you have to be really careful with that, guys. Again, it's all about what is your strategy. If you're getting to the point where you're getting ready to sell and you're considering what it is to do, look at that checklist. Again, download it, the seller's playbook, it's in the description. And if you're still not sure, talk to an agent in your market. If you're out here near Dallas in Forney, Rockwall area, I'd be happy to help out and tell you what to do and not to do based off your neighborhood, based off the current market. But anywhere in the country, you'll have an agent that should be educated and up to speed enough on the market to say, yeah, that's a good idea. No, you're not going to get your value out of it. Like basements. I can't tell you anything about basements because we don't have them out here. But I bet if you go to Chicago or you live in Chicago, someone's going to say, yes or no, you should finish out that basement. And here's why. So I hope you learned a little bit on this. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My information is down here. And I will see you guys on the next video. Again, I'm Azar Moore with Aramac Real Estate Team.